Next.js version 16 is finally stable and we have some surprises just like they promised. It's not only what we saw in that beta release. We finally have use cache, MCP, proxy instead of middleware, build adapters and a bunch more exciting updates. But before we jump into all of that, let's first take a moment to thank today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by C15T, the developer first consent banner. With C15T, you can add a fully compliant cookie banner to your app in minutes, no complicated setup, no endless configs. It handles consent, tracking and regional laws automatically while letting you customize the look with plain CSS. It's the fastest cookie banner on the cookie bench, there killing it. Their CEO, Chris, was actually speaking at the Next.js conference. Links in the description and let's dive in now to those updates. Here we are in the Next.js 16 blog and we can see here all the new features and updates from this new version 16. And these four features that you can see here are all added after the beta release. So let's start with the biggest one and that's cache components. Now, this is something that everyone were waiting for, and that's that famous use cache thingy that we can put inside of our components in order to cache our data. This feature will change the way how we think about caching in XJS and fetching data in general. Important thing to know is that this completes the story of partial pre-rendering, so we have now PPR inside of Next.js ready and stable. All we need to do is to put here this cache components true inside of our Next.js config, and I'll tell you later why. Usually when we did something like this, it was for experimental features, but now there is a different reason for this. And also to learn more in the documentation here, this link actually is not the right link. This is the wrong link leading to some small page where there is no much information about cache components. But I found through the Discord channel this right page. It's here on app getting started cache components. I'll leave you all the links in the description below. And here we can go through cache components and what can we actually do and how to use it. Now, when we are developing dynamic applications, we have to balance between two primary approaches. So these two, fully static pages that load fast but can show personalized or real-time data, and fully dynamic pages that can show fresh data but require rendering everything on each request leading to slower initial loads, of course. And one important thing is that with cache components enabled, the Next.js treats all routes as dynamic by default. It's up to us to control it and to decide what are we going to cache, which data. And how to do it and how it works, we can see right here. So there are three key tools to control our rendering. First one is the suspense for runtime data, for things like cookies, headers, etc. So when we put in the suspense, the rest of the page can be pre-rendered as a static shell. So we are waiting just for that small piece for some component if we are calling in some cookies or something like that. Next key tool is suspense for dynamic data. So that's fetch calls if we are calling something from our database. In that case, again, we are putting suspense and we are waiting just for that call to be finished so we can render that part of our UI. And this right here is the main reason why we need to put that cache components to true inside of our Next.js config. Because now from Next.js 16, all dynamic data needs to have suspense around it in order for it to be cached. So we cannot just call any more data and put it on our page there is actually a warning from Next.js and we need to put suspense. They're basically forcing us to put suspense on dynamic data. And the third one that we were all waiting for is the famous use cache. We can add it to every server component and it will cache our data and add it to the pre-rendering of our page. This really comes in handy if we have some data that is not changing often and we can see it in example here. So we can determine the cache life we can put it to 24 hours and then it's not going to load 
the data all over again when somebody refreshes the page. We have that data stored and it's always pre-rendering like a static page. And this doesn't mean that we'll put use cache in every server component we have on our project in order to make it faster. We need to be tactical. And that's why I really love this image that they added to the documentation. So here we have one whole page and we have S as static elements and D as dynamic. So basically static is the one where we placed use cache. And that's for example, this part right here, the nav bar, which is not changing really often. Then we have the cart. That part is obviously dynamic and we are always like changing the things inside of our cart. So we have to reload that data each time when somebody refreshes the page. And same thing here for recommended. So we are changing those items. And then this one is basically in suspense. And this one right here is using use cache. We'll definitely dive deeper into cache components in one of my next videos. I tested it out. I love it. So stay tuned. Next update is the DevTools MCP for Next.js. Finally, our AI agents will have the context and they will know about every new feature from Next.js 16 and all other releases after that. And it is really easy to implement. We have the documentation right here. Everything we need to do is to add this next DevTools MCP dependency inside of our MCP JSON file like this. And after that, all AI agents have context about the newest features and everything from Next.js in general. So we can ask questions like what errors are currently in my application or something little bit more complex like help me upgrade my Next.js app to version 16 or when should I use use client in app router so AI has all the context that we need and we can build really easier with AI help. Then they updated middleware.ts to be renamed to proxy.ts. And there are no some like big reasons for something like that. They said that it's just for clearer naming and a single predictable runtime for request interception. Fair enough, if you still have middleware, it's still going to work, but you'll need to rename it for future versions, so beware, it can be deprecated in some of the next Next.js versions, and only thing you need to do is just to rename it and to be exported function to proxy, so you don't really need AI for this one, you can just rename it yourself, and everything is going to work. Then we have logging improvements where we can see where time is spent, compile versus render, so if we have slow applications, we can determine maybe where is the problem if it's in the compile or render time and also one more thing I can show you on my textual games project you can see now here this Next.js logo but when I click some link for example this one we can see this compiling right here so this is the new thing I really love this one because we can again determine maybe where is some potential problem this was maybe a little bit longer loading time so I could maybe check this one out and what's wrong and this is the big one as well from Next.js version 16 turbo pack is stable and our builds are faster than ever so they're saying that it's two to five times faster production builds and up to 10 times faster fast refresh which is really impressive and it is now coming by default with every new next.js application and there is no configuration required we can just enjoy the faster build speed of our next.js applications now this update is really interesting they're introducing still experimental build adapters API and this one is to make it easier for developers to deploy their Next.js applications on other platforms other than Vercel. And this is really interesting because I saw a lot of talks on X and on other social media that Vercel is creating Next.js only to be able to deploy it on Vercel platform. But now they created this build adapters API and I can say only respect for Vercel. And we have React 19.2 and I would be really worried if Next.js didn't update React to the latest inside of their new release. So now we have view transitions, use effect event and activity that we can use inside of our Next.js applications. And I wanted to show you also this thing when we are creating new Next.js applications, we can name it here Next.js 
Node.js 16 and we have now these new options. So we can use recommended defaults, which is TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind, CSS, App Router and Turbo Pack. And we can reuse our previous settings that we used. So now here I have again the same thing, but I used Biome, for example, and I hit Biome. So it is basically saving our old settings that we used or we can just click no and we can customize our own settings so we are here now in our old options that we had before i hope you enjoyed in this video for more updates like this join the mighty horde subscribe